think we can agree that we all strive for as much accessibility as possible. And compliance to the web accessibility, of course, only means the bare minimum. Uh, but at the same time, not even 100% compliance to the minimum would always be feasible in all situations. So in the implementing acts of the Web Accessibility Directive, compliance is to be reported in three um, groups, so to speak. So non-compliant is when less than half of their requirements are met, and partially compliant is when more than 50% are met, but still not all of them, and fully compliant then everything needs to be compliant. So to no one surprised, almost all websites and apps monitored ended up reported as being partially compliant. Um, but if full compliance seems extremely hard to reach, how can we ever encourage public sector bodies and the industry to keep improving and innovating? So if I am a public agency and I move from 51% uh, compliance to 99% compliance, I would probably have done uh, quite an effort. And, and also the digital services that I provide would probably have become much easier to use for many users. But in the Web Accessibility Directive reporting system, I haven't moved at all. And that doesn't seem really fair and also not very motivating for people to work. So, um, well, there is, there is um, some good things, and that is that the monitoring agencies can communicate the level of conformance to the actual website owner in any way they like. So there is there's room for, for many good ideas here. But, but when we talk about the reporting to the commission, this is kind of the setup we have uh, for now, at least. So to discuss this, uh, we will again hear from three different member states describing their approaches uh, for compliance status reporting, and then move into the panel discussions where we will be joined by Tanya Kloyt from the um, European Parliament. She is really an ICT accessibility specialist at Parliament, but today she will bring the end user perspective to, to the panel. So what I'm interested here is how does, who, how does different member states report on the level of compliance to public sector bodies and to the European Commission? And why was this approach uh, chosen? Because there is, there is kind of a, a rule on how to do this, but some countries did slightly different. Uh, and just if you found it good or bad, or, or if, if it could possibly improve in, in one way or another. So in the last session, we heard from, from rather small member states, and now we're gonna move to one of the biggest ones. So Germany, Michael Wahl, who is the head of the Federal German Monitoring Body for Accessibility in ICT. Um, I would like to hear from you, if you would like to tell us a little bit about how uh, Germany at the federal level uh, kind of follows the implementa implementing decisions, but also add some other clever things, uh, level of critical non-compliance and, and so on. So please. Mikael. Hello, good morning, everybody. I hope I'm quiet to hear. Uh, happy birthday and good morning. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like to, from Berlin. Uh, yes, uh, first of all, we uh, follow very strictly the implementing decision, which is quite normal in Germany because we're very close to law, but we decided to, let's say, raise a little bit or just put some emphasis on points. And I'd like to figure out three points by this. The first one uh, is about the critical issues. The second one is about, <clears throat> sorry for that. The second one is about a systematic failure scanning or monitoring. And the third one is about that we go a little bit in um, the uh, details. We go above the European standards, which is with sign language and with plain language. So the first of one, we decided um, to uh, figure out critical issues, um, which is also in the implementing decision, but we just thought about um, how can we figure out critical issues? And we just um, try to find a definition based on the uh, specters or the verifiers of, of uh, we are in touch with, with Bundesländer and uh, all the other stuff. And so we just, um, launch a definition which is about a blockade or if um, which means wouldn't end users got difficulties uh, to enter or to access websites or information just in that case that it's, it's kind of a uh, blockade or they can use the website uh, in not in their normal form and not in a specific form so that this is a blockade and this was a link to to set it on the list of critical issues um, 
you can see that in our report if you're interested i think in chapter three to something i can't quite remember sorry for that but as an example we figured out um that in every of the uh, monitoring uh, methods like in-depth or like uh, simplified or apps or web uh, sites or web pages, we found there is not so much um, about the declaration of accessibility status. So if we decided to put it this into the list because um, it's about information and there's a lot of uh, uh, things to do for the uh, audited public sector bodies to uh, get a good or even to start a declaration. So the second point is. Um, the uh, let's say structured failure or the um, more systematic failure research um, in case of the simplifying uh, monitoring method we just decided not to stop by finding the first failure which is would be have enough uh, in case of european law but we just decided to push the auditors to uh, research more failures and also to explain them to the public um, sector bodies so in uh, order to get a broad approach or a broad base where people can not only just see there is some uh, things missing and um, um, or yeah beyond that they can just see it's very very deep impact and uh, how they can solve the problem so that's we don't stop just by one failure finding and go beyond that by a structured and more deep research in a simplified monitoring method and the last point i want to mention i am hope i'm not too quick but i only got five minutes and um yeah we can came to the q a session after all so you can ask me anything but the last point uh, thing i want to point it out is that we uh went a little beyond uh, in accordance with the bundesländer um beyond the eu um yeah eu given law and um, this is also forced by German law because we got a research um, also this, um, if there are contents in sign language and plain language. And um, at this time, we only search if there is anything of that. And the next step would be to uh, think about the quality about that. And we just um, think about it to, to uh, get more into this uh, theme and much more deeper. And the second is that we checked um, documents. We had, yeah, a colleague before talked about documents we checked them also in the simplify method and we did also check the declaration of accessibility which is not usual in the simplify method and that's the last point, well, thing i want to point out we just did 20 or did an agreement um, in our federal system just to look for 20 um, tasks or 20 um with the uh, wcag 2.1 criteria just um, to make sure that the simplifying method is also a little more deep uh, approach because the simplifying, we got much more quantity in that by their, by our, um, by our sample. And we just want to keep that uh, simplifying method also go a little bit more deep like the depth method. So that should be all for now. Thank you for listening. And I think now we've got some interesting points from the Netherlands and Belgium. Thank you very much. So thank you, Mikael. Can I just ask you, uh, because um, that was very uh, comprehensive, but but I think it may be also interesting for people uh, to hear about the kind of the differences between the federal level and the, and the Bundesländer. Uh, do they all use the same method, kind of following the implementation decision, but also adding this level of critical non-compliance compliance and the failure and kind of the systematic or ad hoc failure system that you apply on the federal level? Is that used also? Yes, yes, it yes. is. Yeah. It's one Bundesland missing. I don't tell you which that is, but um, yeah, <laughs> so we got 15 uh, and the, the federal uh, um, area to, to join this, um, this agreement. Yeah. Okay, so that's good to hear. Then you cover almost all of Germany. That's impressive. So thank you very much. And and it's so it's always lovely to work in Europe because you you see the the kind of um, uh, you have your ideas about how people are from different countries and when we go to Germany we always get the structure and <laughs> the order and I think we can all learn from you uh, in the way you kind of approach this and not only following the implementation acts but also going beyond them that is that is something I think is so rewarding there are many many member states actually who do a little bit more than the than the uh, di directive uh, requires but but uh, here in in this specific 
thing about the compliance status, I think Germany is kind of the winner in that league, at least. So let's move to Denmark. Uh, I hope we have Cecilia Apple Agebeck and Søren Bjerg uh, from um, from the uh, Office for Inclusion and Digitalization at the Agency for Digital Government in Denmark. So. Um, I hope that is the correct translation of the monitoring uh, agency. And we will have a presentation of two people in five minutes. So that is that is impressive, just <laughs> that approach. <laughs> Very welcome, both of you. And we are interesting to hear uh, because you developed really a more granular uh, way of presenting the results of the compliance data. So please, please share with us your ideas about that. We'll try to, to keep it short and happy birthday. <laughs> Um, yes, I mean, overall, overall, we send out the, the, the reports uh, or the monitoring results to the public sector bodies, uh, both in case of the uh, in-depth and, uh, uh, and the simplified reports. Um, we also monitor the accessibility statement um, in the in-depth, we check the, like the whole thing uh, uh, really good. And then the simplified, we only do like the, only do like the, uh, um, the most basic needs, like uh, is it up to date? Uh, can you access it, and, and so on. But we also uh, monitor the whole uh, access statement. Um, the report, when we send it out, it also contains a link to the web-based uh, platform, uh, where you get like a more uh, the, all the results. You can see it like in in yeah in uh, really down to the to uh, to the last detail <laughs> almost. Um, so so you can see uh, like what's going on, which criteria uh, is uh, is failing, and uh, how you uh, can solve it. Um, you can also see the monitoring score. Um, the score is uh, developed in uh, cooperation with the Nordic countries uh, and goes from zero to uh, to 500, uh, in which uh, 500 is, is the best. So every time you fail one of the criteria, you get uh, points uh, taken uh, from that. Um, this, the point score goes from, as far as I recall, it's like from zero to uh, 375 is non-compliant. And then it's uh, from 376 to 475 is uh, partially compliant. And then like the, the last small rest from 475 to 500 is uh, fully compliant. Um, and as time goes on, uh, we can uh, minimize that. Uh, we're gonna have to see how we can make it comparable with, with the other, but we'll, we'll see that. But only like the small uh, top part is fully compliant. Uh, yeah, so uh, the score determines whether you are, uh, as I said, uh, non-compliant, partially or fully compliant. Um, yeah, the, over, the overall score of the um, uh, all results of the specific score in the in-depth, uh, we uh, uh, we do like a, a publishing of that every quarter, and then at the end of the year, like from the whole uh, monitoring uh, period. Um, we also just actually just recently put up like a, like meetings with all the in-depth or. Uh, uh, the reports that we send out with the public sector body. So if they have the need, uh, they can put on like a uh, like a dialogue meeting uh, with us, and then we explain to them like if there's something they uh, it's, it's hard to understand, and we will try to point them in in the right uh, direction. So this dialogue is quite actually really good uh, for both them and us to understand what they're going through. Yeah. Uh, and we uh, chose this approach, uh, as you said, to present these more grand results to the public sector bodies which we monitor uh, in order to give them the best opportunities to get something out of this monitoring and learn something from it and to make it more easy for them to actually fix those accessibility issues that we find uh, on the website and thereby improve the accessibility of their website or mobile application. And the score and, com uh, and compliance status gives the uh, public sector body some kind of indication on how accessible they are and how accessible they are on like an overall level. Um, the, the pros of this uh, approach we have is that the score makes it easier uh, for us to follow the development over time from year to year and from monitoring period to monitoring period, but it also makes it easier to follow the development for each website as we re-monitor uh, these websites over time. So it's both for us easier to compare the scores from time to time and from monitoring period to monitoring period and see if there is a development and in which direction this development goes. Yes, furthermore, uh, the granular the granular results uh, creates a lot of transparency about the monitoring methods so that all the public sector body knows exactly where we have been and what we have checked on the websites. And 
this meeting also gives them more transparency in how to how why did we choose to do uh, this and why why is there the why is there a failure on this page and so on. The cons uh, or the con of this um, this method that we have is also that as Son uh, mentioned uh, earlier is that. Uh, as these websites uh, hopefully become more and more accessible, a lot of these um, websites will end in the last category of being very accessible, and it's difficult to see if that's, you know, the, the difference between the websites becomes smaller and smaller, so we will have to reevaluate how we do the score over time. And also we use this tool called QualWeb, which is not so user friendly, so it's it's more difficult for the public sector bodies to recreate uh, the score or recreate the monitoring results that we make because of, of the use of this tool. Um, so yes, I think that's our five minutes uh, sharp actually. So uh, you can uh, just continue, Susanna. <laughs> Thank you. That was impressively. I've never heard anyone speak that fast, and I'm, I'm <laughs> uh, impressed by the captioners and the and the sign language interpreters. <laughs> so everything my fault if the people are speaking too fast is me being too strict on the timing but thank you very much <laughs> yeah, and we just got also some compliments in the chat about that that people are uh, presenting in english uh, on an often complex topic so not only that but also very fast so thank you very much did i understand you correctly that you're actually going to move the bar for fully compliant so that when people start being compliant you will just you will move it so that's wow well maybe that's yeah cool. It, it is something we talked about doing it uh, for the next monitoring period, but I think we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna uh, check that out. Uh, right now, it's it's I think it as it it should be, but uh, of course, I mean they, they are getting better and better, and this is also what we can see because of our uh, score. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. The way we score. The way yeah. we score. So we, can, so, so we can see that they are actually getting better. So if we see that more and more are getting in the top category within, within the last 24 points, which is not that much, then we have to like uh, tighten the, uh, the screws a little bit. So it's going to be even even harder. So, yeah. The tough Danes, as we always say, they are. you don't meet a Dane in a negotiation. You're much tougher than all of us. So <laughs> that's, that's good on you. I, re I really like to hear that. Thank you very much. And now we move to the Netherlands. Um, uh, to Raf de Roy, who is the Senior Policy Officer on Web Accessibility and User-Centered Design uh, in the uh, Digital Government's Inclusion Team in the Netherlands, which is the monitoring uh, uh, agency, I think. Uh, you are joined by Christian Mull uh, there later on in the, in the panel, but I think, Raf, you will do the you will be able to speak in your five minutes on your own, so you don't share it with anyone. <laughs> so you have uh. more <laughs> so, yeah, that was so a little bit complex, I, I, I was yeah. afraid, yes. So, so the Netherlands is really interesting because you generally, I mean, you've been doing this for a long time, even before the directive, but yours are generally focusing more on processes than, than the actual, or both, I mean, you're adding uh, the process exactly. piece to it. So that is why we chose also to hear from the Netherlands. So please, let, let us enlighten us on your methodology, please. Okay, please. thank you very much. Uh, I'll start with... Uh, sharing the screen so then at least you can see what I'm talking about there we go does it yes we see it yes you see it good yes um, and now I lost uh, everything I had but that's not a problem too much oh sorry yeah okay um because uh, we only have five minutes, I decided uh, to uh, 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 zoom in on one of the subjects, and that was the compliance statuses, which are uh, which is much debated in the past uh, in the past years, and how we uh, how we dealt uh, with that. Well, um, the, the statuses uh, which are mentioned in the implementing decisions are fully compliant, partially compliant, and not compliant. There are three different statuses. And there's also a complication with, with those statuses because uh, we found out they were not very clearly defined. And uh, we, for, uh, we foresaw that uh, without such a clear definition that the mass majority of uh, statuses is going to be partially compliant. And I think uh, that is what, uh, what, what many of the... Uh, of the member states have ex have experienced. So what we did was uh, describe the characteristics of those uh, statuses. Well, the status of uh, the characteristics of non compliant not compliant are that um, there's insufficient insight in the accessibility of a website or app, and that the uh, public sector bodies just 
does not take uh, any improvement measures to, to, to enhance that insight. And for that reason, the public sector bodies does not comply with the legal obligation to take the necessary improvement measures only with the obligation to publish an accessibility statement. So that, uh, those characteristics we use when uh, determining what status must be given to, uh, uh, to, to, to a statement. Uh, partially compliance, um, that's an interesting one because that's what most uh, 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 websites and apps turn out to be in, uh, in, in Europe. Well, uh, it's partially compliant when the public sector body provides proof that it has an up-to-date uh, insight in the accessibility of the website or app, but does not yet confirm to all success criteria. Um, the public sector body has identified concrete improvement measures and has made plans to remediate. That I think that's very important. So they, they are in control about uh, web accessibility, but have not yet reached the end goal, which is full accessibility of the website or app. And then there's fully compliant, uh, the same here. Uh, there's proof that the website or mobile app fully meets all applicable success criteria from the standard. Uh, and that uh, all uh, accessibility requirements in the web, access web, web accessibility directive are fully met. And for that reason, the public sector body complies with the legal obligation and the website or mobile app fully conforms to the standard. Well, and in practice, we experienced a gap between the compliance statuses, and therefore we added a new status, first measures taken. And one more was added at the end, no accessibility statement published, because if nothing's published, then you, that, that's, that's even worse than not, <laughs> not compliant. Of, uh, so that's, that's why we, we, we added uh, that one. And uh, first measures taken was added as a stepping stone because we saw that there was a gap between not compliant and partially compliant. And the characteristics of this one are that uh, there's no sufficient insight in the accessibility. And uh, the public sector body has uh, published an accessibility statement which describes that concrete improvement measures are going to be taken, uh, which are aimed at getting a better uh, insight uh, within six months after the statements is published. So the public sector body is temporarily complies with a legal obligation, but not with the standard. Here are all five together, fully, partially, first measures taken, not compliant, and no accessibility statement published. Now, how did we proceed with that? Because by, the, by, by the, describing the characteristics, uh, we had we, we could distinctly uh, make distinct uh, separation between the various uh, statuses. We built an accessibility statement tool to be used by public sector bodies. And based on the information provided, the tool determines the compliance stat status. So it's not the public sector body itself that says, okay, we are fully compliant or partially compliant or not compliant. That's what uh, is, uh, is the result from the information that has been uh, added to, uh, to the, to the uh, accessibility statement tool. And use of that tool uh, is, uh, is mandatory and uh, the statements are stored centrally, which is very, has, has proven to be very useful because we don't have to scrape or uh, harvest uh, data. Uh, it's, it's just at our disposal. And it also enables continuous control monitoring. Uh, if you ask me uh, what's the status, I can just look up in the system and I give you the status of that moment exactly. And that I think is, uh, is, is, has, has proven to be very, very useful. Okay, this was my presentation. I think I'm within five minutes. So um, that's it. Every, everyone is winning a prize today by, by keeping on time. That's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And what an effort to explain all these complex things and, and getting so much information into the, the really small period of time that I have given you. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, welcome. And I think for everyone else who maybe hears this for the first time, who hasn't been talking to you before in the monitoring agencies, this is a lot of information to take in. I realize that. Um, but but the uh, the monitoring reports are uh, are public, um, so it's possible to read afterwards if you want to read up on the uh, on at least some of the some of the details of this. So um, now we move on to the to the panel uh, discussions. 
um, and to see uh, if we can, how we can improve this even better. So based on the examples that we have heard now on the different ways of, of uh, uh, reporting on compliance statuses, um, is there kind of a perfect approach or, or a better way to do this uh, than, than the other? Uh, and I would like to ask this question to Tanya. Uh, who uh, is working with accessibility in the European Parliament, but today is here also as, as kind of the end user representative. So how, how do you perceive uh, the compliance statuses when, um, when you are approaching it from the end user perspective in accessibility statements and so on? What, what is the best approach according to you? Okay, so, uh, well, the aim is um, the compliance with the EN 301-549 standard and meeting all the requirements. Um, however, in these um, uh, presentations, we have heard that uh, some uh, reportings are more gra granular, and uh, in my view, we should be inspired by those reporting. And um, ideally, I think that in the future, it will help that we have um, uniform um, compliance status report so that we can much more easily compare and um, I imagine it will be also easier for um, the one who are assessing because um, um, many many are struggling with this still yes this is my yes. view on that yeah mm -hmm. I agree so um, and if you I know you you all of you uh, the monitoring agencies you have been discussing before in the WADEX and so on but is there anything that you could kind of you want to pick up from from each other either the monitoring the agencies that we have heard today or uh, or someone someone else something you would like to kind of be inspired by or maybe try to develop in your own country uh, in the upcoming years or, or are you happy with your your own approach as being the kind of the perfect one um what does what does germany say about this michael wall is there any anything you would like to kind of change or improve or, or try out the during the next monitoring period maybe yes for sure we just have to try uh, anytime <clears throat> to go new ways and so on i found both colleagues from Denmark and from or three colleagues or four colleagues from Denmark and <laughs> Netherlands very very interesting just um, and I think we'll talk in that uh, or yeah go in uh, bilateral talks uh, perhaps there's there's one oh, I should start my wheel okay I think now I'm quite visible I hope um, what I wanted to say is that perhaps we in Germany just think about to put some more stress on the in-depth method because um, perhaps there is if it is possible to launch the scope a little bit more in that in-depth method because when we go to uh, consulting we just see there are so many questions uh, in the public set it uh, in the audited public sector bodies and um, we just want to solve or just to to yeah to do an, an uh, provision for for this all these questions and this would be very great if um, there has to be or it would be possible in the future to go a little bit more aligned with the in-depth. Um, perhaps we can keep the simplified um, because it's in good, let's say, entrance to the uh, um, to the subject, but a little bit more stress on the in-depth would be very nice. Mm -hmm. So that's perhaps a thinking, a, let's say, a German thinking or uh, approach. Mm -hmm. That look that sounds good. Uh, I'm I'm actually I'm said this before, but I'm so happy that the member states are kind of positive to the monitoring and positive to the enforcement and and everything around the directive because during the transposition period we had a lot of pushback, but when it's kind of started rolling, it shows that it. I mean, many things can be improved, of course, but still, uh, the monitoring, the idea of monitoring and feedback and all of this is is kind of working in a good way, and I think generally positive positively. Uh, received on the other end so that's really making me happy that people do not want to do less but even even maybe more <laughs> so from Denmark um, Søren and Cecilia um, do you do you get, did you get any inspiration or new ideas from your colleagues in other countries or or any other monitoring agency approach that you have heard about that you would like to maybe try out in the upcoming years I I, I think um I think when we hear from other membership countries, uh, but it's also something that we ourselves has uh, thought about, it's like when, when I mean, I think now we have the basic um, 
uh, structure in place with the web-based platform and the whole uh, yeah, setup is, is pretty much in place. So I think now we can start uh, maybe the following year to go a little bit closer. I mean, we use a lot of resources in the uh, accessibility statement to, to, to check out whether uh, the uh, public sector body has it all correctly and if they put it in the right place and so forth. It's still a, a challenge that, um, that it's filled out uh, correctly in the way so it's kind of hard for us to control to to uh, to check out something that is not in place in, in that way but i think one of the things that we have to look uh, further into is how is the use of uh, uh, disproportionate burden, disproportionate burden. <laughs> uh, because i mean it's like if 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 uh, i like a public sector but i said that we don't uh, uh, put captions on a video for example because the it's that, expensive because more. it's too expensive because the technology from uh, uh, speech to text is not there yet then it's then it's like a and uh, it's 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 like a, a a technology that that is moving like uh, really fast right now so it's 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 not something that they can keep on saying so uh, or it may be like people saying the same thing in re reports and so on so we have to go closer into that it, it, it's a bit dangerous because it's the public sector body that has to to do the evaluation themselves so so we have to challenge them on on some of these things and it, it could be like a a little fight in, in in our control with them sometimes but i think we have to go in and uh, and take that uh, take that on the uh, on us yeah. that, uh, that take, fight. The wall. take the wall yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um that's interesting because uh, in the review we didn't find that many proof of disproportionate burden so is that do you do you find it a problem in denmark or do you do you think that the public sector bodies kind of use the disproportionate burden clause clause in a way that they shouldn't no i, I think it, we like it's also when we started with these uh, with these meetings when we had the dialogue with the uh, public sector but i think they're actually pretty fair uh, we have to say that so it's not it's it's not it's, it's not like an uh, exemption that they misuse it's not our our uh, interpretation. Uh, interpretation right now but i think in some cases we we see that this could be challenged in a way so i think it's it's i think the example with the videos is something that we hear like often it's like from city council meetings and so on they live stream it and then they have like a supplier that can't do it and then maybe we have to put some pressure on them to because i mean there's like a couple of suppliers that uh, are on the market right now uh, that have like the whole the whole market uh, and they can do it so i think it's for us to put the necessary pressure on them to start looking maybe at other uh, vendors so it, yeah so yeah. But, uh, yeah. it's that's kind of the monitoring agencies being the the activists that kind of push the market that then that's the power that public sector has i mean that that's the kind of the beauty of the directive is that you could really influence the market in a good way the way just by using your your tools for monitoring and so on so that's really that's reassuring to to hear and denmark is a small country so i can re i realize that the um, you know market players can be very big <laughs> on the on one market and then the language exactly. is, is also small so yeah mm. Mm. so uh raf and and uh, christian um uh, i know that you are kind of or i think that you're happy with you because you have a very kind of well thought through methodology for the compliance and and so on and also the tools that you use for a centralized collecting accessibility statement have been discussed with many other member states and I think if, uh, quite a few of them are, are interested in doing something similar or hoping for the Commission to do something similar so so but is it still something you could be inspired of or, or something you would like to try, try in the next period of time did you um, yeah is it something you would like to to share about possible improvements or additions to what you're doing Yes. Uh, shall I start, uh, Christian? Then yes, I give it to you. <laughs> um, uh, yes, uh, the, um, uh, Denmark spoke about granularity. Uh, that's what we uh, until recently missed in, in our system. Uh, it was uh, uh, one of uh, five uh, statuses. But uh, the most interesting status is partially compliant. And uh, for that status, uh, we uh, 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 made an adjustment. So we now know how many success criteria are not yet met uh, when you have a status partially compliant and that gives a lot of uh, more insight how far are you from uh, reaching the end goal which is fully compliant uh, so uh, we are working on that right now to uh, to 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 implement it 
and um, maybe Christian can say something more about uh, the tool and the plans we have uh, for that. Yeah, of course, we're continually trying to improve uh, the tools. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, yeah, I think it's important to realize that um, accessibility is more of an organizational issue and not so much a technical one. Uh, okay. So the most difficult thing to do is to keep the energy flowing uh, within public sector bodies to keep improving. Um, so that's why we're trying to continuously monitor their progress. Uh, and we can do that now because we're sitting on a mountain of data because we have this central register of um, uh, 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 accessibility statements. Um, what we're now trying to build, uh, I think we're going to uh, release a first version in about three or four months time, is uh, we're, we're, we're developing a dashboard in which we can uh, show real time uh, how a PSB is uh, performing at a certain moment in time. And uh, in, the, in the future, we will also be able to uh, show uh, how they are evolving uh, in, in their, uh, well, maturity, I guess, their accessible, uh, accessible maturity. Um, so that would be like uh, a way to, uh, yeah, do shaming and, and or faming, actually, naming and faming and would be a better way to say it. Um, so that would be, I think, the biggest challenge is to keep that energy flowing within public sector bodies. Um, and not just monitor it once every three years, but to do it continuously and uh, be able to uh, uh, target certain uh, public sector bodies specifically with their problems, help them out um, and, and, and do things like that. So uh, yeah, we're working on that right now. Sounds good. I like the sound of keeping the energy flowing, the energy of accessibility. That's a good, that's a good expression. Thank you for that. So. Uh, so Tanya touched a little bit upon it, uh, kind of the, the problem or challenge that these um, compliance statuses are different between the different member states. So I would like to ask you, do you think from your perspective, and we can start with, with, the, with the Netherlands, um, do you think that it's a problem that we don't do this exactly the same? Or do you think that the kind of the room for flexibility that, that is provided in the implement, in, in implementing acts um, is a good thing? So how do you, how do you see that? Christian, maybe. I'm sorry, you were asking me a question. I thought it was uh, mm -hmm. somebody else. Could you repeat the question? Sorry. No, just um, so is there, um, because the, the member states do this differently, but so that we, we, we see that, but is it, a prob is it a problem that that member states have this flexibility or should we, should we try to align to do the compliance status reporting exactly the same way or should we allow for flexibility? Today it's flexible, but do you find that a problem? Would you prefer that it was the same in all member states? That was my question. All right, okay, I understand. Um, I don't think it's really a problem as long as the results are, are good. Um, so I think we should do some uh, evaluating first and see uh, which method gives us the best results uh, and then perhaps um, and do some extra stuff on an international level. Um, I think we all found a little bit that the, the, the methodology that was uh, well forced between uh, brackets to, uh, on us uh, uh, well was too vague or not not uh, well defined enough uh, to uh, well it actually I think uh, the way that it is now being done in, in all member states uh, it shows that everybody has different ideas about it um, and um, uh, it, it, it turns out to see which ideas are the best um, I think everybody now thinks they're doing it the best they can it has to do with uh, uh, the experience that we, uh, every member state already has had in the past. Some are new to it, some are just working on it already for about 20 years. Um, so yeah, we should learn from each other. Uh, I think we should do, do, do some more evaluating. It's very interesting to see what every uh, member state does at the moment. We should try to bring it together more, I guess, in the future. Mm -hmm. So can I just ask you, you said um, that the, the most important thing is the, that the result is good. So do you mean that the result is accurate or do you mean that the websites are actually becoming accessible? <laughs> because that's too... Yeah, the too last thing, the last thing. Organization needs to continually improve. It's not one thing, it's not a project that you can finish on a Friday afternoon and then you're done. Um, uh, new websites are being uh, launched every day 
Um, uh, so we need to keep, like I said, that energy flowing and, and help yeah. public sector bodies. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, there are a lot of best practices, but we need to bring those together, I guess. We, uh, maybe I can add to that. Uh, we have uh, 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 the public sector bodies themselves uh, must prove that they uh, do partially or fully uh, conform to the to the norm. So a lot of uh, research is done, uh, not a, sometimes with automatic tools, but then you have only a, a little part of the total, and most of the times by formal inspection. So there's a lot of inspection uh, reports available in which a claim can be, uh, 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 how, how I said it, uh, uh, that, that can confirm a claim. And we use like a methodology like the uh, Web Content Accessibility Guidelines evaluation methodology just to see that the approach is taken by, by, by uh, uh, examining websites and apps is, 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 is harmonized. And I think that works pretty well in practice. So if someone claims something, then you must be able to substantiate that claim. I think that's really important. Yeah. So let's hear from Germany then, Mikael. Um, is it a problem from your point of view that we do this in different ways, um, being the structured German here? Um, no, this, I think for Germany it's, it's not a problem. Um, I think every everyone or every let's say system or state member state got its own structure. So it's uh, we are federal, others are not. So, mm. and perhaps we also got some other rules. And perhaps I like to, um, if I may, um, yeah, put some yeah, emphasis yeah. to one mm -hmm. point. Just uh, we see this this uh, declaration as an part of starting point of communication and so our uh, dpos just say from the um, the people with cognitive disabilities or the the deaf uh, hearing union um, they say it's good to have this let's say doorway but we like to communicate about these failures with this public sector body in our language and i think this is the could be the next step so i think i don't know how far the politicians reach in, in germany or if there will be, or in Europe, if there will be a time when uh, these two languages or type of languages will be uh, more provided or provided by law, I don't know. But uh, to us in Germany, I might say it makes completely sense to say um, above these failures, if, if you claim them, then you have to just talk to the people in their language. And this should be perhaps the next step. Yeah, it's a very good point. So thank you. So I let uh, Denmark also respond to, do you think flexibility and the, the possibility to do things your own way, is that a problem? Or probably you don't think that that your own way is the problem, but I mean that we don't, that we can't kind of compare and align uh, across EU. Would you say that is a, a problem for any stakeholder or, or is it okay that we do this differently? It, it, it kind of depends if you see it on like a like narrow national level uh, then i think it's <laughs> then i think it's it's fine because i mean in our case we've been working with, working with our uh, metric uh, uh since like for from the beginning from the beginning since the last uh, three years now so i think if we got like a new eu level in uh, the whole uh, comparison we have to translate this from our to the eu so i think that would be kind of a, a hassle <laughs> in, in that way but i think I think it, I mean, I think it, I mean, I don't think it would interfere with the whole accessibility work in each country. You can still have your own ideas and, and whatnot, but I mean, you, 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 I think if, if you have to, if you have to look at it from an EU perspective, uh, like in the national level, if, uh, if we can see that like one city is, uh, their website is doing uh, much better than the other city, then the, uh, the, the city that's, that is not doing so good can learn from the, like the uh, top achiever and i think the same thing should be like in the case in the in the eu because yeah. i mean if we can see that in in belgium they are like top scorer of all times i think the other continent and we can compare the results then i think that's i mean should be the way to go but again from a na national perspective then uh, then we i mean yeah but i think that's the whole case in in a, a lot of things we also talked about with the monitoring reports the more we can uh, simplify this also from the country's perspective that it's not uh, gone so far I mean uh, for us when we had to start doing this it, it was it was like I mean what did we do now we've kind of figured it out but I think from the ones that are not so far yet it would also be help and yeah the whole comparison thing I think it would be really really good yeah mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. So Tanya, do you want to wrap up? Uh, because you you started out saying that that comparison is is important. So is that kind of wearing your European Parliament hat? Or is it your wearing your end user hat? <laughs> uh, in end that user respect? hat. 
the end user, yeah? Mm -hmm. yes. So why, why is it important? So we have heard different, the monitoring agencies are not really uh, in agreement on this. So why is it so important from an end user perspective with a comparison? Well, um, uh, it, it would facilitate to compare progress between countries. Um, um, uh, well, I as a user, I would be interested um, what is um, um, the state between some countries or uh, countries, but um, um, I think we are um, also um, or some uh, are <laughs> losing um, energy uh, in finding their own methodology or finding the way how to report. Um, now we are hearing from countries where accessibility has been done already for some time. And uh, of course, um, the, the other countries where accessibility has not been part of the legislation um, have more difficulties in finding their reporting methodology to the compliance status. This is why my opinion is that uh, uniform reporting should facilitate to to others, um, but um, well, it is an open discussion, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. There are pros and cons of each approach yeah. um, and also going beyond the implementing decision maybe should be still uh, there, yeah. Yeah, so I, I see your hand, uh, Mikael, but I will start with, with a question from the audience because um, we, we need to let them talk as well. So I will give you the floor in a while. Um, but it seems like, Tanya, you are uh, also in alignment with, with what we heard from Saren from, from uh, Denmark, that that is really uh, about maybe supporting being efficient and also supporting member states who, who have kind of less resources or, or less experiences in this whole thing. And I think that is a very valid point, of course. So we had a, a question specifically for Denmark here. The scoring mechanism that you mentioned was fascinating. Is there an online resource where we can find out more, ideally in the English language? So do you share any of this uh, with anyone? Søren or uh, Cecilia? Um, I actually just uh, here in while the meeting was going on, I just saw that the uh, the chat. So I just I just wrote to uh, our supplier, uh, who are, we are working really closely to, uh, because we I think I think we did like a prior presentation where we sent out the metric um, where we had it in English. So we just have to find it at the European Commission. Though. At, yeah. yeah, yeah, at the European Commission. So I think we had like a VATX meeting where we where, where we sent it out. So uh, so. We had it. We can just, uh, we can just, if not during the meeting here, just afterwards, we can send out the the, the English version of our. Uh, but we have it in Danish as well on our website. I think, of course, the the numbers are translatable, but all the notes and the explanations are not, uh, of course, uh, easy to read in Danish. But if anyone is interested in the Danish version and cannot wait for the English one, this is already <laughs> available. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also a beautiful language to learn. So why why not try to <laughs> improve your Danish? That's yeah. always yeah. every day. I think that yeah. is what you should do. Yeah. So um, so we have a question here. Uh, thank you for the big efforts and work. And I guess that is for the monitoring agencies and not for me. Um, I, I'm wondering about the immense fi financial if efforts needed to do this task: evaluate, improve, teach, monitor anything like that. So any ideas to cope with that uh, and get more people or institutions engaged? So anyone that's for, for anyone in the panel to respond to. Or I will give the floor to Mikael because you have raised your hand. So you, if you can try to start with this and then you can say what you <laughs> wanted to say. <laughs> uh, it's always bad to raise the hand. Yeah, um, no, I think the um, when you look at the, at the uh, let's say, intent of the European Commission or European Union, um, it is to harmonize the old, not also the standards and also the market. And I think if there comes more, and let's say now we are at EIAP, uh, we are at the right spot. If we get more and more experts and more uh, um, people who just can really do a precise and a qualitative good job in, in accessibility or UX uh, checking or monitoring or consulting so the prices will go down i think because it's the logic of market and so i think this could be and I, this the reason uh, that's the reason because I, I like this this uh, web accessibility uh 
guideline because it, it just it's not only harmonization it's also let's say getting the this stuff more and more in the market and get it raised by more and more people who care about it and i think my, my question is or my just say a little uh text to uh tanya and the head of a Europe, european parliamentarian would be to uh, if we talk about harmonization or uh, compliance uh, or comprehensive uh, utilities in the EU reporting, it would be very great to have a form uh, of the report. It would be very great just to develop it, perhaps 2024 or 2027, because um, then it would be much easier for everybody to, let's say, uh, look what's going on in France and Portugal and Germany. I don't know where. That would be perhaps you can just take it with you and talk to European Commission. I don't know. Yes, I think I think that that um, request is is firmly placed uh, by the Commission, and I'm quite sure that they know yeah. about this request because that we have they talked do. about that at length. But but thank yeah, you for yeah. the reminder. And they're mm -hmm. not here, so they can't defend themselves. But um, but let's hope for a template for the future. I, I agree with you. So the next question is: What has been the response from the owners of the websites where breaches have been found? So when you are when you are um, Telling them about the compliance, their compliance statuses. What what do they say? I I think I know the response to this because I've heard it from the interviews of the web review. But it would be interesting to hear it from the monitoring agencies. So, for example, Ralph in in the Netherlands, how do they react when they get maybe a bad point? Um, well, most uh, take it into account uh, and ask uh, how they can be helped uh, to uh, improve on their website. I think the in general the position of most. Uh, public sector bodies is uh, uh, rather positive uh, towards web accessibility. There's always organizations that are trying to, 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 to hide, so to speak. But uh, in general, uh, there's uh, a lot of understanding for the needs of people with disabilities that they also have the right to, uh, to, ex uh, to access to information and services that uh, the, uh, the government uh, provides uh, via the internet. So, um, <laughs> and we try to have like an atmosphere in which uh, uh, have, uh, are, are, are really just uh, stimulated to uh, improve, start improving and keep on improving. And that was the problem in the, in the previous period uh, before the, uh, uh, the, the, the European guideline is that they only could claim uh, fame, so to speak, when they fully conform to all success criteria. And that was sometimes really frustrating because they had one or two criteria that they could not meet at that moment. And then they were just on the same level as uh, organizations that did nothing at all. So I think that's that's a, a, that's a good development that, that has changed because there's always perspective eh, to, to take measures and uh, to improve. And then they're also welcoming your, your report because they can kind of act on it in a better uh, way. That's and sometimes they want to compete with their neighbors. I think that's really uh, that that kind of social behavior is uh, just uh, yeah. We make use of it of that, of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, of course. So I want to ask uh, uh, our Danish friends Cecilia and Sean, um the re the response in Denmark. You seem to push quite hard uh, for the public sector bodies. And uh, so so what has been the and uh, the response? Did you get any pushback, or are are the public sector bodies generally happy to to follow what you ask them to do? Yeah, I mean, I think they are in uh, like in 95% is, is really happy to uh, to receive the report. We also try to to tell them that, that when we come and uh, check out and monitor their their uh, their website or their app, it's not like I mean uh, they they should try not to see it as like a like a control of them, but it's more like a gift because yeah. they get like a full report, uh, like an in-depth report, which is actually quite costly yeah. for so, free for free so actually so they get this and then they can pass it on to the supplier or their own uh, uh, work it on uh, themselves but I, I think uh, i think most of them are really happy we also as i said start these dialogue meetings uh, and in, in which they're expressing uh, their gratitude <laughs> actually being checked so they can because they want to do it uh, but it's in sometimes it's also a question is like in the small uh, municipalities or so um it's it's also a question about lack of uh uh, yeah, skills or competences so i mean and this this is this is like something that this is this is not something that's going to change overnight this is like as you said we are still a small country so all this it's 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 a question on the on, uh, on the suppliers and 
who, uh, who like uh, all the vendors who do all the um, self-service uh, solutions uh, and whatnot. So it's it's a whole question about uh, the the product uh, being okay and the ones that have to check it in the municipality when they received like a, a, a self-service solution that they can check that this is not okay. Mm -hmm. So it goes like it's like the whole uh, whole organism that has to uh, have have like a, a skill set up. But it's, I mean, it, it is really, it is, it is really on the way now. So we can see it's, it's on the, it's on the scoreboard accessibility that if you, if, if you don't live up to this as a, a private contract, as a vendor, that, then you, I mean, you will not get chosen uh, in, in, in that way. So maybe you can also add that a lot of people think uh, when they get this report, they have something in their hands to show to their leadership. And that creates a lot of focus inside the organization. Like when you have something which is proof that your website is not actually doing very well and it's actually not in complying with the law, you can take this and show it to your boss or something and say, we have to do something about this. Mm -hmm. And that creates some focus in, in the in the organizations, which helps improve the overall accessibility. Absolutely. And we just we got a question about this. So if there are any countries in the EU that disqualify software suppliers who do not deliver according to standard, but deliver well on other criteria. And I, I don't think there are kind of on a country level, a blacklist, but but really if what what we hear from Denmark is true, and I've heard that from other member states as well, it's really an increased demand and more and more uh, awareness in the public sector body. So when they procure, they are starting more and more to ask for accessibility. So it's not kind of, if you're not providing accessibility services, you're out, but 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 you will not be selected. I think that is kind of the a little bit softer approach that that we see happening uh, in, in several of the member states, which is, of course, rewarding. And also goes hand in hand with what IWP tries to do with, with certification and, and kind of a professionalization of the uh, of the accessibility profession. So I think that this really uh, in, very good for us to hear that this is also moving in, in the member states, but but the need for more experts is something we we all share, I think. <laughs> so, um, and I'll also, I'll also ask um, uh, Michael from Germany about this. So, what was the, re the response uh, in general, not from everyone, but in general in in Germany at the federal level, also positive, or or did you get pushback from from the public sector bodies? No, I think uh, to keep it short, I can completely go in line with what the Danish colleague said. I think it's huge interest it's uh, kind of a we just let's say sell it as a none of charge completely free consultation and uh, <laughs> that that works i think yeah <laughs> yeah congratulations you are monitored I, I i love to hear that that's really it's really um it's fascinating that that this goes so well and i know now that I, people will email me and say that I'm over enthusiastic but but uh, but I, I really think that is what we have heard also from other member states not only the member states that are here today uh, but really that we there is a lot of good uh, positive things um, going on out there so so that's really rewarding so uh, let's see what we have more here um, yeah a little bit about the the most common breaches and if whether video has been tested so we have some kind of quite detailed questions about exactly what is tested and so on and i think we cannot really go into all these details uh, but there is the uh, the en standard is online and if you look at annex e sorry annex a of the en standard that is all the requirements and we also got questions about the different levels of monitoring so the monitoring methodology required by the commission is divided into parts so each member state depending on how many inhabitants they have they have a certain number of websites that they are supposed to monitor using two different methods so the simplified method is something that is done with a a smaller number of requirements, but on a larger number of websites so that you can look for non-compliance and get more of a statistical overview of how non-compliance looks in the country. The in-depth monitoring is where you are supposed to check for all the uh, requirements or the relevant requirements in the uh, and applicable requirements in the EN um, uh, Annex A. So, so, and those are done on a much smaller number of websites. 
So that is kind of the, the levels. And videos, yes, videos are uh, checked, but not live video recordings are exempt from the uh, Web Accessibility Directive so far. Um, so it's only the pre-recorded videos that needs to be uh, captioned, for example. So that was a really fast um, response to three or four questions <laughs> in one go. Uh, but we are approaching uh, lunchtime, and I want to be careful with all our interpreters that have been working so uh, intensely when I have forced people to speak very fast again. I'm sorry about that, uh, but really well done, everyone. And thank you so much to the panelists and speakers. And uh, uh, we have a one hour uh, lunch break so that you can relax and grab something to eat and come back with loads of energy and, and keep the energy flowing as the, uh, the Dutch colleagues said. Uh, and we will meet again quarter past one uh, Central European time when we are going to talk about uh, current and upcoming requirements. Yes, so then we are looking into the future. That is going to be also very exciting. Thanks a lot and have a good lunch break. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.